two of our three hookmen for their second cars have now been defeated and all we have to do now is figure out how to defeat Keiko for the second time as I run straight into a fountain but anyway just gotta try and see if I can work my way through this and somehow catch up to Keiko and is she gonna turn off? not in the direction I was hoping she would but either way we've still got plenty of time so hopefully I should be able to catch her hopefully this won't be one of those ordeals that ends up that ends up lasting as long as perseverance frames would last in the World Snooker Championship. Kind of like when hey boy, try to keep up. Kind of like when Luca Brussel was able to eventually beat Si Jia Wei in the World Snooker Championship to the final against Mark Selby and ultimately because Luca Brussel at the time had pulled off what was truly an unthinkable comeback he ultimately made it to the final and he was able to fend off from one of the Crucible's best players the way I see it. And I can definitely say Mark Selby is clearly one of the best. Probably the second best World Snooker Champion behind only Ronnie O'Sullivan. Enough small talk, let's race. And it is fair to say that, well, by this time when this game came out, Ronnie O'Sullivan technically was a world snooker champion at the time of when this game came out. I think it was a double champion if I'm not mistaken by this point. Ronnie O'Sullivan by the way has won the world snooker championship seven times and his second one came in 2000. Literally in the same year I was born. You think you all bad? You real bad this time. Ronnie O'Sullivan is definitely one of the very best when it comes to snooker, especially with the number of championships he scored under his 30 long year resume alone. But yeah, as I was saying before, it's easily fair to say Ronnie O'Sullivan is clearly the best of the best when it comes to snooker. And there are plenty of snooker fans out there who will agree with me. Stupid men in silly clothes want to ask me out again. It's also quite easy to understand why my parents. You made it. For someone who has watched I we were a snooker late. matches briefly. I do understand why snooker is so interesting to a lot of people in this country. And it doesn't look as though things are going to get any better. Unless she winds up wrecking herself. Or she winds up tripping over something. And nope, I am not going to win this. Oh, never mind. Well done, more luck. Less judgment, but well done. That was a complete raw reversal of what I thought was going to happen there. I mean, I was literally in a dead heat with Keiko right there before she slowed down. And then I somehow beat her. And as a result, she finished third. That's amazing. So Homeboy 1 finished in second. Then it was Homeboy 4, coincidentally in fourth. 
followed by Homeboy 2 and then Homeboy 3. Definitely a competitive race because there was only 5 seconds between us. So, let's now dial up Kiko for her second car. You think you beat me in that? You think again. And do not need to change cars. But yeah, in this country, if you do manage to watch snooker long enough, you do eventually become intrigued with how much strategy and numbers are involved for the best of the best to do get out for the trophy. And it is also fair to say that Aside from Mark Selby, Ronnie O'Sullivan is technically the only other World Snooker Champion in the history of the Crucible dating back to 1977 that has officially managed to successfully defend his title. So just trying to see if I can beat Coco whilst I'm here, and I completely missed the shortcut there, through the building. But either way, I think speed is probably going to be the key for this final sector, as long as I don't hit anything, and hopefully speed will manage to reward me with victory, if I don't hit anything. Okay, so doing well so far, and there we go. I win! And I beat her in the end by... Less than seven tenths. Well, better get a replay whilst I'm here, because... I know there are going to need to be some shots for me to get of this Jones J420 and Keiko's Piranha PDQ-R. So it is fair to say I did benefit from speed at the end of the day. And it's ultimately because of that, I was eventually able to officially beat her. But yeah. I mean, at the Crucible Stadium, nobody has officially managed to... Nobody else, aside from Ronnie O'Sullivan and Mark Selby, have managed to successfully defended their title. They call it the Crucible Curse, but I really couldn't tell you what that's all about. And it is fair to say it's given us plenty of historical moments in the World Snooker Championship since it was moved over there. And it is fair to say there's also been a lot more people living in Sheffield as a result. Which, by the way, is where the Crucible is located. And, to be completely honest, I live just outside Sheffield, so... For someone who is technically... a hometown boy when it comes to... or basically... a resident of Sheffield from someone who lives close nearby, close by to the Crucible. It is fair to say that it's basically on my doorstep. Yeah, I'll get this thing in orange. This thing actually looks quite good in orange, in my opinion. But there we go. So, 
All we have to do now is beat all three of our opponents one more time, and then we should be able to unlock Kareem. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, his name's Kareem. I should have given a spoiler alert, but sadly didn't. Oh well. Anyways. Just got to do one more head-to-head -head with each of our opponents, and then we can go up against Kareem. But next time, we will be duking it out once again with Emilio. And with that, stay tuned for more of Midnight Club.